In this video, we're going to be breaking down the brand new Valor meta. A lot of characters have been experimented with more by top teams, buffed up or down, and their changes are finally settling in, or just has been underappreciated throughout most of the previous patches. That's why in this video, we're going to go over the new tier list, breaking down the best and worst characters so that you know what is dominant right now, starting off with the D tier. Now, these are characters that unfortunately, either due to the map picks right now, or just to the fact that they are not powerful enough of objectively they are lagging behind some of the other characters that are on this list and first off we definitely have to talk about deadlock where deadlock did receive quite a bit of nerfs a while back but they weren't enough to fundamentally fix her core problems and she's still the weakest sentinel in the game by quite a margin add to that the fact that icebox is in the map pool and that is deadlock's undoubtedly best map and she's still not seeing substantial play there are some fundamental problems that need to be adjusted for the character to see substantial meta play but in ranked if you really Really learn this character inside and out i think you could still succeed with her as you can with most characters but definitely deadlock would either need some buffs or some reworks going into the future what do you think she should really get to make her more viable let me know in the comments down below now of course next in the d tier we actually have to talk about neon and it's unfortunate for neon because neon is actually a really strong character it's just the map pool does not favor her at all right now with fracture and pearl being out of the map pool when those maps are not in the map pool neon just doesn't really see that much play because those are the main maps that she does see play on this is a little bit unfortunate for neon mans but this character can be used to get value on any map in any situation any character that has high mobility and the ability to outplay people in 1v1 situations can definitely find value in the hands of someone that really knows her movement so neon is still a ranked superstar even if in a meta objective sense she's in d tier she's still a character you could definitely climb with now before we move on to the next tier let's talk about skillcap.com where we have in-depth guides tips tricks over many of the characters on this list so if you really want to level up your gameplay you get to see top level pros play your mains while we break it down giving you everything you need to know to get better start to climb and get to the rank that you've been trying to get to for so damn long we offer a rank improvement money back guarantee so if you don't climb you don't pay literally zero risk check it out right now down below the next up, we got to talk about the ranked superstars tier. And these are characters that are really, really great and ranked. But when it comes to pro play and high level meta play, they start to fall off due to some weaknesses in their kit or their kit being tailored mainly for solo carrying and solo fragging. And first off, a character that you might not expect, Sage. Now, Sage's absolute best map right now is in the map pool Icebox, and she's not really seeing play. And her previous best map split before in previous seasons in the past, she hasn't been seeing that much play on those maps for a very long time, especially in meta play, but... Even though Sage sees very little pick rate in pro play and high level play, in ranked and throughout most ranks, Sage has some of the highest win rates in the game. So it's kind of strange where Sage is winning a lot of games, but she's not necessarily winning games as the skill ceiling rises and there's better tactics that you can incorporate. So Sage is a really great character to play in most ranks, but is not necessarily going to be the best if we talk about objective meta. But if you're just trying to get from silver to gold or you're trying to climb your way up to ascendant, Sage is not only perfectly fine, she's exceptional. Now next up, we have some solo carry characters in the ranked superstar tier. Iso, a character that just allows you to pretty much frag out on a lobby. Definitely going to be very reliant on your mechanical skill to pull it off. But if you do have the mechanics to make this character work, you can definitely have a large amount of impact. And in a similar way, Reyna is also in this list. Not a character that will see any pro play or meta play, but definitely a character that could take over any lobby they're in. That being said, I definitely think that Reyna's pick rates and win rates are a little bit inflated purely due to smurfs, which is an unfortunate reality. But definitely Rain is a character that you could frag out with and put an entire game on your back if you're winning your 1v1s. But I will say that if you're playing Reyna, you really should be top fragging. This character is a character that gets most of her value from winning these duels and from having a high kill count. So if you're top fragging games and losing, I don't really think you should be like, my team sucks. You should be like, I, sh I did what I was supposed to do. Let's actually move on to C tier. Characters that are seeing play here and there, not consistently in the meta, but still very powerful characters. And first up, we got to talk about Chamber. Definitely a character that has been experimented with a lot on Breeze, used to be a lot better, but still sees play here and there, can abuse snipers and things like that. And in addition to that, pretty good on Lotus, although not seeing a crazy amount of play. I think Chamber's in a place where he's really kind of being pushed back in the meta. One, due to his power level, it's a little bit on the lower end side. I think some of his cooldowns are a little bit steep and some of the power level and cost of some of his abilities are a little too rough to see consistent play. And the other elephant in the room is the other Sentinel's just being so damn strong and the 
initiative being so damn strong. Like there's so many other characters that you would almost rather play than Chamber, but I do think that in ranked play, you can hard carry with Chamber, of course. And speaking of hard carry, we got to talk about Phoenix, a character that has been moving up the tier slightly, especially after we've seen top teams experiment with this character at the pro level. Phoenix just gets to farm ultimate orbs and can build an entire strategy around ultimate orbs in a way that other characters can't. And if you're spending time to rotate, grab orbs, popping off a couple of rounds, you're just going to chain ultimate into ultimate into ultimate. And that can get crazy out of hand with Phoenix. And it's also a way to brute force a push with a legitimate strategy that doesn't end up with y'all just pushing and just instant dying. If you want to win more rounds, come up with a legitimate strategy centered around abilities and ultimates. And I think Phoenix is one of the greatest ones to do in ranked. Phoenix also has a very high win rate at every rank of play. So definitely a character that I think is a ranked superstar and in C tier in meta play. Now we do got to move on to Yoru, and Yoru is also another character that is being experimented a bit in pro play, but we all know is like a potential ranked superstar god. I mean, it has one of the highest win rates at the highest ranks of play. Yoru actually has a really low win rate at most ranks of play, and it's kind of like directly proportional to the rank you're in. If you're playing in the lower tiers as Yoru, you're probably going to have a pretty low win rate, but in Radiant, you're going to have a crazy high win rate, and it just shows that this is a character that if you master, you could take over ranked completely. So it's a character that is worth, you know, investment in worth the ability to completely outplay your opponents and once you learn and get better with this character and you have and mechanics and reactions and aim to take advantage of the core moments that you need to when you're teleporting in and going for these plays you could just absolutely hard carry like no other character but last up in the c tier we do got to talk about harbor mainly used for double controller setups on maps like breeze definitely has more potential to see more play and i think he's underpicked in ranked play because there's a lot of situations where you can play harbor and play him even as a solo controller it's not the worst thing in the world you can still get value you can still win games with them especially if a harbor is playing as a secondary controller i would imagine that there's going to be like some harbor clove setups we'll talk about clove a little bit later but harbor's utility can really be used to make plays and make plays with your team and, and set up some really interesting engagements that favor you and your team so if you don't have to fill the number one job of a controller and you are allowed to kind of be more flexible with how you use your utility then that's really going to showcase the true strength of harbor the true carry potential of this agent next up we're moving on to the b tier characters that are really really strong and still see play maybe they don't quite match up perfectly with the map pool right now so they're not seeing more play but they're still seeing a good amount of it first off we got to talk about astra astra is just a really fantastic controller right now just really powerful at playing the double controller setups really good with characters like harbor really good with viper and i do think that astra overall is an underplayed character in ranked play her biggest problem in ranked is that she does require a certain amount of active communication like if you're a completely silent comser and playing astra good freaking luck and it's better if you're playing in a duo at the very least with astra and trying to set some combos up and making sure that your teammates can trust you to pull people off the spike and things like that overall astra's still just a phenomenal character in the meta definitely deserving a b tier at the very least so this is where we're putting her now next off is breach and unfortunately for breach right now with haven and freaking fracture out of the map pool he's weaker than he's been in a long time he's still strong but when those are back in the map pool he's amazing because on Haven, you could be really aggressive with the defense sided, taking space and trying to take duels. And then a Fracture is just his best map overall. So like, I think this character is a great character to start to grind now for when the map pool changes and uh, really is still strong even when the map pool doesn't perfectly favor him. It's pretty good on Split and many other maps. So overall, I'm going to put Breach in the B tier. Now, next up, we do got to talk about Fade. And I do think that Fade is kind of being held back most by the fact that there's just other characters that could do what Fade does a bit better. Sky and Silver is just a little bit too strong to justify playing fade consistently and with maps like pearl out of the map pool overall fade is just running a little bit on the weaker side right now but i wouldn't sleep on this character completely because i do think that especially if you're not someone that knows silver lineups and you're not very committed to learning them then i do think that fade actually becomes better and in most low elos of play i would say that fade can be better in a lot of people's hands and easier to use ultimate you can clear really close corners and people just love to push in aggressively for no reason in most ranks and and it's not as necessary around lineups to get consistent value. So overall, I wouldn't sleep on Fade for ranked play, especially in the lower tiers. But next up, we do got to talk about Brimstone. Right now with Fracture out of the map pool, it's a little bit rough. Bind is still good for Brimstone. But one thing that I think is important to know is that this is a character that could be subject to change along with Astra and many others. When Clove just got introduced as a dome smoker, a lot of these other controllers have to be on wary, right? They're like, oh, the new kid's on the block. They 
going to take my job, right? So you got to be a little bit concerned, but I do think the Brimstone overall will be fine, especially when Fracture specifically is back in the map pool. Next up, we need to talk about A-tier characters, and first off, Gecko. And Gecko is a character that has slowly but surely been creeping up the meta pick rate. Definitely has helped that Sky did get nerfed, and it allowed him more room to kind of see more consistent play. And I do think that overall, Gecko is proving himself to be a viable character in both ranked and pro play. Gecko is not necessarily going to be objectively better, but definitely sees a good amount of play and has room to further increase his pick rate overall. And I think if you really master Gecko, you're going to be able to really easily hard carry game. So yeah, I'm going to put Gecko in the bottom of A tier, followed closely by Sky. Sky did receive these gigantic nerfs, and it just kind of goes to prove how strong Sky was before the nerfs, because this character is still very, very good, very, very strong, can still gather info, can still flash people, can still set up your team. There's just a lot that Sky can do. Her ultimate is really solid, and overall, she's just pound for pound a very efficient character and definitely deserving of A tier. And next up, we do got to talk about Killjoy, and Killjoy is phenomenal. Just a very great character. Right now, the map pool is definitely favoring her a lot. I think the only thing that's keeping her pick rate down is the fact that Sova is also good, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But Killjoy is just a really, really strong character that you have to learn how to deal with. You need to expect to go up against a Killjoy or a Cypher almost every single game. So knowing how you're going to interact with their utility, what your plan is when they just barricade a site, this is no longer freaking 2022 Valorant. You shouldn't be instantly dying to all this utility to setups on lane by Killjoy. Like if you're just running face forward into all these things and losing, then I don't know what to tell you. But Killjoy is a very strong character. Definitely a character that's going to get a lot of value with their utility, forces people to rotate off, makes it really hard to push a certain site, allows your team to play more liberally towards the other side of the map because enemies are more likely to avoid places where Killjoy is at. So yeah, overall, A tier character for sure. Very, very strong. Next up in the A tier, we do got to talk about Jet. And Jet is just one of the best characters in the game. A super strong, versatile duelist. Great with the economy because of knives. The best character at using eco weapons because you just get to dash away or dash in if you're dashing in with stinger or you're dashing away after killing someone with the sheriff or whatever the case might be you also get to abuse the operator better than any other character in the game so you combine all these things together and jet is just really phenomenal and then you take the meta aspect of jet being able to smoke and dash onto site and create a lot of space for your team especially if you make sure to time it right so that your team can actually follow up with you you can really play so many different sides of the field like on one hand jet is this character that is really good for team-based strategies and on the other hand jet is this character that gets to abuse a ton of strong weapons and can just completely solo kill a game like she is a ranked superstar and a meta tier character all wrapped up in one so definitely deserving a very high a if not s the next up on the a tier we actually do got to talk about ko and ko is seeing good play on both breeze and ascent and ko is just always been a character that has been underutilized very powerful very efficient especially if you learn some of these pop flashes for your team you can help them take really easy duels his ultimate is one of the best in the game his knife is an amazing ability that gives you information and can completely deny deny ultimates, deny plays, set up plays. KO is just a very, very strong character that has a very diverse kit, but I do think that KO does take quite a bit of practice to get really competent at him, and it's reflected in his win rate throughout most ranks of play. So yeah, definitely keep that in mind and make sure that if you want to learn him, you're putting in the effort, you're learning the lineups, and your diligence to actually get good at this character. Now, before we talk about S tier, we got to talk about Clove, and I'm purposely putting them between A and S tier because Clove initially seems incredibly strong. We don't quite exactly know where they'll place in high level play or pro play right now, but we do have some potential indicators that Clove is going to see a ton of high level play and will be very, very dominant in the meta. And there's a couple of reasons for this. We have seen how Omen, seeing the most amount of pick rate, has been kind of changed into a smoker duelist hybrid where Omens are getting really proactive. We saw this with Sentinels and Tens where they're teleporting in. They're going in, they're creating space. They're lurking mid, but they're smoking for their team and they're trying to create something to happen, right? So Omen could lurk, be aggressive. He plays both sides of the field, right? Clove is another example of a smoker that can do that. They can play both sides of the field. They can really be aggressive they can really lurk make plays but also do the vital smokes for their team because clove can still smoke after death which is so important to the character you can actually afford to be even more proactive with clove than you can with omen in some situations and i'm not saying that omen is unplayable or anything like that i think omen is still going to be very strong but there is a lot of room for a character that combats the meta in this way and especially when omen is obviously the thing that the meta really really likes having a character that can play as a pseudo variation of omen maybe even in conjunction with omen is just incredibly strong and i do think that really clove 
Grove has the potential to go straight up to S tier, but is definitely going to, at the very least, be B, most likely A. So, yeah, very strong character. And they really have the potential to really just kind of establish themselves as one of the best characters out of release. But now, moving on, let's talk about the S tier. And first off, we do got to talk about Sova, which we talked about a lot. He's just very, very strong, really good on the maps of seeing play right now. If you learn important lineups and you learn how to be flexible with your utility, Sova can just be a great all-rounder that can definitely be played in almost any composition and can definitely just get you win after win a fantastic character to play in this patch and probably any future patch and next up we do get to talk about cypher cypher's just really really good he's becoming more easy to counter people are prepared for him a little bit more than they used to be but still cypher's phenomenal there's a lot of creative ways to use him as well saving cages to use it to play around on site retake space there's a lot of things that you could do on this character to really give yourself the leg up against your opponents and i do think that cypher overall is just a character that is warping the meta around him and moving on to some of the other maps like fraction when they come back cypher is really good on those maps too so i don't think that cypher's dominance will go away anytime soon next up we do got to talk about viper where every time i talk about this character i think uh, i i lose a little bit of my mind because once again this character is needed in absolute doesn't have any characters that can fulfill what she does on the maps that she plays in like breeze you need a viper there's pretty much no getting around it right it's super super important harbor doesn't fulfill the same duties as line smoker and until a smoker comes out that can do that viper will remain dominant and needed as an s tier pick Next up is Raze. Raze is the best duelist in the game. Very close to Jet, and I think Jet and Raze are kind of neck and neck. But Raze is just very versatile in how she creates engagements. She can go in and create space very quickly. She gets really, really strong chip damage and the ability to just get kills with her utility. I think another part that's underrated about her is the fact that she can break apart a lot of utility, which is really needed right now. Like, being able to Jet Dash is cool, but you can't Jet Dash through trips or anything like that, and you still need something thing to break up the point right and raise does a lot of those things and i do think that raise is probably one of the best solo carry characters in the game as well so she would be a solo carry god as well so yeah overall raise is really really phenomenal and last up i do got to talk about omen omen is still the freaking king strong versatile takes over the entire meta right now and is used on so many different maps i do think though that clove has the potential to steal a bit of his pick right i don't think it's going to be enough to take him off of the s tier by any stretch of the imagination but but overall, right now, Omen is so unique and powerful in what he does, which is being an aggressive dome smoker, that another aggressive dome smoker being put into the game is definitely going to be something that competes with his overall viability. Anyways, if there's anything that you agree or disagree with, definitely let us know down below and check out Skillcapped website where we have everything you need to quickly climb the ranks. And there is a 100% money back guarantee. So if you don't climb, you don't pay. So there's literally no tough calls. It's the easiest rank up possible. So check it out right now down below thank you and we'll see you next time